Hello, welcome to the first class section of Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. My name is Jeff Heaton. I will conduct these courses on the C Sharp programming language for neural networks. This is a video course that will consist of videos that will show you the class information as well as assignments that will let you program actual neural network things and learn about the technology. This course will follow a book that I wrote about neural network programming in C Sharp called Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. During this class, you will learn about several neural network types. You will learn about the Hotfield neural network, the feed forward neural network, and the self organizing map. You will also learn ways to train these neural networks. You will learn about back propagation as well as genetic algorithms and simulated annealing, which are ways that you can train a feed-forward network when the backpropagation does not do what you need it to do. We will also see examples of using neural networks in real programming examples. You will see how to use simulated annealing and genetic algorithms to solve the traveling salesman problem. You will also see how to apply neural networks to financial markets for prediction. You will see how to use optical character recognition with the self-organizing map. You are now watching Class 1, Part 1. This covers solving problems with neural networks. In Part 1 of Class 1, we're going to look at problems not suited to a neural network, problems that are suited to a neural network, how to train a neural network, and how to validate a neural network. We will begin with problems that are not suited to a neural network. Basically, problems that are not suited to neural network are problems that you can solve with a standard program. If you're already using programming logic to solve a problem, then a neural network is probably not a good application for it. If you can use simple procedural logic to solve the problem, you don't need a neural network. These are problems that can be easily expressed as a flowchart. Programs where you need to know the exact steps that you took to solve the problem are also not good candidates for neural networks. Neural networks, as you will learn through this class, work through a complex set of weights and other measures. You don't know exactly, down to the minute detail, how the neural network solved the problem. You have a general idea, but you don't know every time the neural network adapts. It's nothing that you can put on a flowchart. So for whatever reason, you need to know the exact solution that you used. A neural network, again, is not a good solution for this type of problem. We're going to also look at problems that are suited to a neural network. After all, that's the point of this entire course. Programs that need to learn, for example, games. Games are one of the big parts of computer programming that are pushing neural networks. Game logic allows the game to learn from a player or from players at the company before the game was ever even released. This allows the game to adapt to players as, it, as they play with the game. This causes games to not become boring as you quickly learn how to beat the game. Another type of program that is commonly used for neural networks is pattern recognition. Optical character recognition is a very good example of this. The United States Postal Service has invested heavily in this area to allow computers to be able to read all the varying handwriting styles that humans use on the fronts of envelopes. This allows them to read zip codes and other useful information to get the letter to where it needs to get to. Another area where neural networks is, are particularly useful is classification. Classification is where you have groups of data and you need, well, you need to put the data into groups. So you have lots of individual data, for example, maybe applicants for a loan, and you need to separate them into risk categories. The neural network can separate these through a data mining sort of algorithm into, the, into these groups. This allows you to make decisions about what sort of data you're looking at. Yet another kind of application that neural networks are often applied to is prediction. This is where you have a series of data and you want to extrapolate through time. This can be applied to weather prediction, to the stock market, to other financial markets. 
Basically, if you have the prices for a stock leading up to a certain date, you can program the neural network in such a way so that it attempts to predict future patterns in this. Another very important aspect to neural networks is training and validation. A neural network essentially accepts input data and outputs output data. These are just numbers. The training data is basically tables of numbers that are used to train the neural network to get the desired output. Usually you will have a large amount of training data. There's many important decisions that go into how to train the neural network. Say for example you have a thousand training sets. This is a thousand numbers that you are going to put into the neural network. You may or may not have expected outputs for those 1,000 numbers. That gets into supervised or unsupervised training which we will discuss later. But you have this data. You have a thousand data sets. Do you want to use the entire 1,000 to train the neural network? Most likely you do not. You want to keep some data so that you can validate the neural network. You may use 500 of these items to train the neural network and 500 to validate it. So you train the neural network with the first 500 and then you use the other 500 that have been kept away from the neural network to see if it really actually learned the underlying problem and didn't just learn how to deal with those 500 items that you happen to give it. Maybe it's an 80-20 split, maybe it's a 90-10. These are all things that you'll need to experiment with as you train the neural network for your desired data. Validation is not something that simply happens after training. Validation may very well mean that you need to go back to the neural network and retrain with a different part of your, uh, of your training data. Maybe you need to swap the data that you use to validate it with some of the data that you use to train it or maybe you need to collect entirely new training data to begin with. Throughout this course you will hear about supervised training and unsupervised training. It is important to understand the distinction. You are always providing the neural network input neurons. So you may have 10 input neurons. This means that you're providing 10 numbers to the neural network and you're expecting some sort of an output from those 10 numbers. Well, the output neurons, do you provide what you expect the output neurons to be or not? That is the difference between supervised training and unsupervised training. Supervised training is where you provide both the input and the expected output. Unsupervised training is where you just provide the inputs and you expect the neural network to learn information about the data that you provided it without any sort of supervision or expected outputs. You may wonder how the neural network can possibly learn anything if you don't provide the outputs as is the case for unsupervised training. Well, usually classification type neural networks are what is used with unsupervised training. You want the neural network to group the data into groups. You don't necessarily know what groups you want the neural network to, to break the data into. That's part of the discovery process. So you provide the neural network, say for example, with a bunch of um, mortgage applications. It'll break them into groups. What do these groups mean? You don't necessarily know. You tell it how many groups you want it to break them into, but you then need to go in and analyze the members of each of these groups and see what it says about them. Maybe you had broken it into three groups and perhaps three, perhaps the first group is desirable applicants, the second group is neutral applicants, and the third group is undesirable applicants. These are all things you need to investigate based on the input that you provided to the neural network. We will learn a lot more about both supervised and unsupervised neural networks as we progress through this course. This concludes part one of class one. Part two continues by focusing on some of the specific applications that are commonly used for neural networks. We encourage you to continue watching this course and to proceed on to part two. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.